Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and one thing that I hear a lot of Flat Earthers say is they say that the Flat Earth movement is growing, the truth is getting out there, and someday they'll all be taken seriously. Now I have seen the way that things are going with Flat Earth, and from what I can tell, nobody's going to take them seriously. Well, at least no serious person will take them seriously. And the reason for that is because Flat Earthers haven't actually given anyone a reason to take them seriously. Of course, Flat Earthers think that they've given people plenty of reasons to take them seriously, but they haven't. Just because you have an outlandish claim does not mean that that claim should be taken seriously. I could claim that I'm God. That doesn't mean that I should be taken seriously about that, though you probably should. Now the question that should, and sometimes does, get asked by a lot of Flat Earthers is, why won't any serious person take Flat Earth seriously? And the answer that they come up with is, oh, they're just paid by NASA. Not a good answer. Of course, the real answer is a bit more nuanced than that. So Flat Earthers, if you happen to be watching this, pay attention. Also, this won't just apply to Flat Earthers. It will also apply to Young Earth creationists. Now for this, we need to start with a simple question. How do you show that the Earth is flat? Now a good way to do this could be to spend ages watching a large ship sail off into the distance. If it disappears bottom first, then we know that the earth isn't flat. If it never does that, then the earth could be flat. Now fortunately, plenty of people have already done that, and we see that... Well, it looks like the Earth isn't flat. That should be the end of discussion. Though, of course, we still have flat Earthers, so clearly that hasn't been the end of discussion. Instead, we get a number of claims, like perspective makes things disappear bottom first, or just zoom up on it and you'll be able to see it again, or it's the angle of attack and Rayleigh criterion. All this is meant to say that, yes, things actually do disappear bottom first on a flat earth. The problem you run into with this is it now becomes impossible to distinguish whether the earth is flat or a globe using this method. Or does it? So flat earthers like to claim that we see too far to be on a globe, so therefore the earth can't be a globe. Often it goes that if we see too far at all, then the earth can't be a globe with the radius that they say that it is, so it's more likely that the earth is flat then. But that's not how any of it works. We can turn that logic around and say that if ships disappear bottom first at all, then the earth cannot be flat. Neither of these really work as an argument because there's always going to be some margin of error. So when it comes to flat earthers saying that we see too far, the question is, and that never gets answered, is how far do you expect us to see? Not on a globe, but on a flat earth. Until we get some kind of numbers on this, then flat earth becomes unfalsifiable. That is to say, there is nothing that you can do to prove it or disprove it. In science, if an idea is unfalsifiable, then it gets discarded because there's simply no use wasting your time on something that cannot be verified. The same goes for creationism, by the way. There's no way to actually verify it, and it gets worse for young earth creationism because in an effort to try and shield it from all the criticisms that have been levied at it, they've tried to make it unfalsifiable. That is why a lot of scientists discard young earth creationism. It's not because they're against God or anything, it's because young earth creationism has no scientific value. Just like me saying I am God and giving you no way to verify it, that also has no scientific value. But this is also the reason why Flat Earth gets discarded. It's not a giant conspiracy to hide the shape of the Earth, it's just that it has no scientific value and Flat Earthers haven't really attempted to give it scientific value. But it gets worse for Flat Earthers because another one of the arguments that they like to throw out there is well, I can't feel the Earth spinning, so therefore it must be flat and stationary. Now, there are plenty of problems with this. First off, they're going off their senses. If we just go by our senses, well, then I have definitely felt the Earth spinning before. I could conclude from that that the Earth absolutely does spin, but it spins specifically when I get drunk because the Earth just wants to have a good time. At the end of the day, our senses are very unreliable. Sure, they are useful for some things, but if you've got the option to use a scientific instrument, 
use a scientific instrument over your senses. That being said, that's only one of the problems with their argument. Another huge problem that immediately disqualifies it is they haven't done any kind of calculations. I mean, how can you say that something should happen when you haven't done any kind of maths to be able to tell that that should happen. At best, their argument relies on spinning a tennis ball really fast and then assuming that scales up to the Earth. But it doesn't. You see, with physics, you actually have the ability to calculate what should happen with that tennis ball. If you scale that to what's happening with the Earth, none of the stuff that Flat Earthers say should happen actually happens. The reason is because they haven't done any kinds of calculations to check. It's all just based on vibes. I feel like it should happen, so therefore this should happen. Except just feeling a certain way about something isn't a good way to check what actually matches reality. But another part of it is that even if they were right about it, it doesn't demonstrate that the earth is flat at all. That is because all their argument does is try to criticize something that they don't agree with. That is essentially flat earth. They don't try to show that the earth is flat. They try to make as many arguments as they can against the globe. A lot of them assume that if they can show that the earth is not a globe or that something is false about the globe, then that automatically must mean that the earth is flat when it doesn't. It could be that the earth is a cylinder and that we're all wrong. That would actually explain a lot more than flat earth does. And I find that the same goes for young earth creationists as well. They seem to assume that if they can show that evolution is false, then everything must have been created. They seem to not consider that there might be other possibilities, so they spend most of their time attacking evolution rather than showing the viability of creation. But here's the thing. There is something that does very much condemn flat earth. And that is the fact that they need to lie. There are several instances out there of Flat Earthers either lying or misrepresenting what they are showing. Sometimes it's them lying about where they took a photo from or lying about something that they say that NASA made. If you were correct in your position, then there'd be no need to lie or misrepresent anything. You could just state the truth. Instead, I see Flat Earthers continuously showing the same images which have been shown to be misrepresentations. It really seems like they don't care about that for people that say that they believe in the truth. If you say that you're just trying to show the truth to everyone and you want to be taken seriously, then if you show something that can be shown to be untrue, acknowledge it. If you don't acknowledge it, then that just shows that you don't really care about truth. It's not truth that you're interested in. It seems closer to just telling people what they want to hear rather than an earnest search for what is true. And I have seen young earth creationists do this as well, where they'll misrepresent something like all the water in the earth's crust and say, see, this means that there could have been a global flood. And when you tell them a lot of that water cannot move freely because it is in ringwoodite, they don't seem to care for some reason. But there is an area where flat earthers have young earth creationists beat. And that's not a good thing for flat earthers. You see, recently there has been an attempt to try and end the entire flat earth debate with an experiment. You see, the idea is that a flat earther and a globe earther go down to Antarctica and see if they can see the sun for 24 hours. Now, they'll be there for more than 24 hours, but the idea is if there is a 24 hour sun, then that puts a huge dent in flat earth. Now, flat earthers have already started trying to discredit this. They've said, oh, well, you're not going to the South Pole, so therefore it's invalid. There have been people putting their hands up saying, I'll go, and then they reach out to Will, and then Will tells them, sweet, you can go, but you will need $30,000. And then they claim that because they're not allowed to go, you know, someone that no one's ever heard of before, they claim that Will is lying. I mean, I would like a free trip to Antarctica, but I can't expect Will to fork out another $30,000 just so I can go. There is absolutely a process to these kinds of things. But then there's been a bunch of shenanigans with the flat earthers who have been told you can get a free trip to Antarctica. And because of that, I am thinking that maybe it's not just serious people who will not take Flat Earth seriously. Maybe Flat Earthers don't even take Flat Earth seriously. You've had Flat Earthers for years going around the world, going to multiple countries, setting up conventions in multiple countries to try and spread the word that the Earth is flat. And now they actually get the opportunity to go to Antarctica, something that, mind you, they've had the opportunity to do all this time, just none of them have bothered to set this up because they'd rather spend their money on setting up conventions. But they get this opportunity and either they can't go or suddenly there's a bunch of conditions that need to be fulfilled. And because of that, it seems like Flat Earthers don't take Flat Earth seriously. And how could any serious person take Flat Earth seriously 
when flat earthers don't. If flat earthers ever want flat earth to be taken seriously, they've got a lot of work to do. And I don't think any of them are going to do that. Anyway. That's it for the video, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me make videos on in the future. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Vermont1777, Tony C, Roshina Keller, Kid Vicious, Sarch Campbell, definitely not NASA, Mori, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there, or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, Thank you for watching.